how's it going? I am on my normal Sunday run. Weather's great, nice and hot, but it is looking a little ominous in the distance over there with storm clouds. And this rain that has been drenching Sydney and New South Wales, parts of Queensland as well, has been really well needed. So it is great that it is happening. Uh, it is helping with the bushfire efforts significantly, especially in northern New South Wales. They've had a massive reprieve because of all this rain, and that is great. It unfortunately has not fallen enough in the southern parts of the state and up to Victoria. So that's a bit of a bummer. They're still getting a lot of issues at the moment with the fires. But we can hope that it spreads there later or that they get rain at some point soon. Australia has been in drought now for a little while. So it's a very significant drought too. So we need as much rain as possible. Now while the rain is very sorely needed and it is very much appreciated, it does also create in itself another problem, which is water quality. See, after the bushfires, there's a lot of smoke and soot and burnt stuff all over the place. And so when the rains come, washes all of that, when it goes to the right places, such as the dams, that is great, but it pushes a lot of that burnt material into the water system which then makes the water quality not as good. One of the main things that will affect is the crops. So uh, the farmers will have this water that's great but it will affect the crops and vegetables and produce that Australia uses and as such in general people will be seeing a bit of a price rise in veggies and fresh fruit and veg in general. Of course with uh, large retailers there's the concern that large retailer will want to keep the price low, to make the customers happy. But then if it's costing the farmers more to actually produce the crop and they're not increasing the price of the sale price to the customer, then the farmer loses out and they lose their farms and everything. So you've got to make sure there's a balance where customers aren't too badly affected but that we pass on the proper costs to the people that are producing those fruit and veg. But anyway, the good thing is that we're getting rain and it is helping at least some of the fires up north. They're getting a massive reprieve and they are very, very grateful for it. But enough about the fires right now. Uh, once again, I will leave links in the description box below of where you can donate to various places to assist with the bushfire relief. So if you've got a spare few dollars, please check that out and please donate as much as you can. And also just of course a quick thank you to everyone who has helped out so far or supported in any way the bushfires here in Australia. It is greatly appreciated. Now today as it is my Sunday run, it was also a very warm, very hot day. So it's very important to bring adequate hydration with you. I do have my hydration backpack, but the bladder in it is a little dirty. So I'm not using it today. I'm gonna to clean it out, make sure it's nice and clean before I properly use it. But I do have my flexible water bottle, which I fill with whatever I need and put it into my naked belt, which is what I showed off last week, which is that sort of meshy material that goes around your waist with three big pockets. Great belt, awesome for running, especially if you're doing lots of distance. So these are great in combination with that. This is Salomon brand, but there's you know easily loads of other different brands that you can choose from. And they work, this is like squeezy tube at the top, which you bite on that, and then the liquid flows out. Just gotta watch out though, because if you are bending over or sitting down or whatever, and it's in the wrong spot, and this gets squeezed, then liquid comes out and it look making can make it look like you've wet your pants which is what it did to me today before i went for my run now to drink out of these it's fairly easy you just got to kind of hold it near the top bite and take a big gulp yes it's a little tougher than a regular drink bottle uh, a lot of people may prefer those drink bottles where you can actually 
sort of tie it to your hand. I don't prefer those. I like to have my hands free. So I like these a bit better. All right, got up the hill. Heart rate, about 196. Woo. I'm doing some hill repeats today. So my heart rate is gonna be skyrocketing. <sighs> but that's, for me, in the 190s is actually semi-normal. I have a higher than normal heart rate. Some people, you know, your max heart rate's 170 or 180 or whatever. Mine is about 220. Um, I don't know why. It just is, it always has been. I've always been right up there in the higher heart rates. Uh, if, like, if you've got a history of heart problems within your family and you've got a higher heart rate normally, then it may be a good idea to lay off the really intense exercise just in case there is some hereditary issue that may cause a heart problem in you at some point. But for me, my family is all fine. Haven't really ever had any heart problems that I know of. So for me, it's just, I've got a higher heart rate. And following on from that, looking at the heart rate. So I have the Garmin 935, which is not the current generation of Garmin watches, but is the, just previous generation. The current generation, which only just came out recently, is the Garmin 945, which has a whole bunch of new little features, new little updates to the Garmin 935. But if you're wanting to get a really good deal, the Garmin 935 is still one of the best um, triathlon sports watches on the market, in my opinion. It, the battery lasts, uh, if you're not doing any exercise, it can last weeks, um, which, is more than you can say for things like the Apple Watches and the Samsung Watches. Uh, and during a big triathlon, such as an Ironman, the watch can last for up to 24 hours of continuous exercise, or thereabouts. It got me through multiple Ironmans and half Ironmans with loads of battery to spare. And as part of the bundle, I got uh, the triathlon bundle, or whatever it was, um, you get a heart rate monitor, which of course you can't see, but it is right there and that thing helps uh, to track my heart rate and I find that the heart rate monitor bands work significantly better than the wrist heart rate so underneath the watch there is actually a little light um, which pulses and it can look at your heart rate at your wrist but I've always found when I rely on that one it's just so inaccurate like I go up a hill I know that my heart rate's at like 180 190 but it's showing 120 which is, of course, completely wrong. I would barely ever be down at 120 when doing exercise. I'm talking about heart rate. Mine's now back down to a good level, so start it up. And let's go back down the hill, and then back up the hill, and then back down a hill, and then back up a hill. I'll go through my Garmin heart rate monitor and watch in more detail at some point in the future. That looks pretty steep. Do you reckon I can get up it? Let's give it a go. That's one thing with doing trail runs and any sort of off-road running. Don't look at your pace. It means absolutely nothing. Especially when you're going up things really steep. This will probably tell me that I'm barely moving at all. But whew, ah, I did it. Oh, whew. don't trip over sticks as soon as you get at the top of the hill. Whew, that was a little steep. Here's what it looks like from at the top. Quite steep. At least, for me, that's steep. And I train down the hill, and I know there is a set of stairs that goes down to that training hill, and I think that this little pathway, which I've never taken before, might go there. Let's give it a go. So the hill, or the training area down the bottom there, it includes a running or racetrack. So really great for doing uh, like 800 meter splits, 400 meter splits, that sort of thing. Oop. Oh yeah, this is exactly where I wanted to go.
and final little hill before I head home. It's the furthest point in my run today. So the remainder half of this hill will be nice and easy. Oh, it's steep, very steep. And once again, my heart rate's up at the mid 190s. So I'm gonna rest a little bit until it gets down and then jog home. I think it's about 3K to get back home, which will put my total run to about 10 kilometers today, which is decent, especially considering I did a whole bunch of ups and downs. Well, the downhill is always easier, always more fun. So what else is happening in my life at the moment is Kung Fu is making a big thing at the moment because Chinese New Year is coming up, Kung Fu being Chinese. So we do the Chinese traditional lion dance at the Chinese New Year festivities. So at the end of January, start of February, woo, I'm going fast. Start of end of January, start of February, I will be in a two person lion, not like my one person lion, which I run, fun runs in and welcoming in the Chinese New Year. So that involves a big drum uh, with a drummer beat and then the lion is on the ground and it wakes up and then it dances around. We do a few jumps and flips and sorts of tricks, which is great fun. And then we sort of interact with the crowd a little bit, sort of bite kids heads with the lion head, try and make babies cry. If you make a baby or a little kid cry, when you're in a lion dance costume, you've done a good job. And there's two parts of the lion dance. So there's the head or the tail. The head is the person who opens and closes the mouth, the eyes, controls the actual head itself. The tail holds onto the belt of the person who's on in the head and acts as the rear two legs of the lion. So you gotta be really good at following and picking up what the head is doing. And as part of that, there's the red packets, which are always good luck. And the lion dance itself is good luck. It's very important to a lot of people, especially Chinese communities, because it is the sort of good luck New Year festival. And of course, it's just loads of fun. Well, that about does it for me this week. If you want more swim, bike, run, and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.